Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Naila Edwards. Sorry, my voice is a little bit like nasally. I'm a little bit sick, but still filming. So alhamdulillah. So I asked uh, on Instagram and YouTube if you guys had any questions you wanted me to answer to send them over. And uh, these are the ones I got. So bismillah, let's go through them. And if I don't answer your question, I'm very sorry. I just didn't want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, do I have any regrets after becoming Muslim? No, alhamdulillah. I accepted Islam when I was like 22 years old. So I pretty much lived my kafir life to the fullest. Um, and I, I knew the difference between having Allah and not having Allah. And nothing I had in my jahiliya um, is worth giving up Islam for. Um, so no, I mean, I think the only thing that I wish I'd done differently maybe is um, just taken more time to like learn, especially early on in the beginning and not been so arrogant and stubborn and pretend like I know everything when I knew nothing. I think that's what I would regret. regret. Uh, thank you for the duas that I received as well. Um, A lot of people ask me how to find a wife, and I'm not really sure that I'm the right person to answer that question. Um, I think the best way to find a wife is, first of all, to set your intentions correctly, because a lot of people, the reason that they're looking for that specific wife maybe isn't the best reason for their deen, and Allah will not give you something that's not good for you, right? So we're actually like asking Allah to give us something that's not good for us. So maybe change your intentions and just really look for that pious wife, a wife who will bring you peace. Um, I know that there's like lots of websites now. There's the mosque that can help you, family. I think born Muslims are a lot luckier. They have a lot of family that will try to get them married anyway. Um, but nowadays marriage isn't easy and it's not easy to find and it's not easy to keep. So don't worry if you're still struggling, you are not alone, inshallah. My favorite story of the prophets besides Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I really like the story of Prophet Yusuf. I think there's so many lessons to be learned in that story about forgiveness, about patience, about the Qadr of Allah. I mean, it's like endless. So I really enjoy reading Surah Yusuf and learning from his stories. My favorite film or TV series. That is one thing I want to cut down on. That's one of my goals this year. Um, obviously, I, another question that I was going to read later, but I'll answer it now. I work in TV and film production. I'm a producer and a presenter on TV. Um, I've worked in TV and film since I was like 16 years old. Um, so it's obviously a big part of my life. It's a big passion and I love film a lot. I love watching films, but it's a big waste of time. And I'm praying, inshallah, that this year will be a year of knowledge for me which means I have to stop wasting time in my evenings watching TV and spend those hours studying, inshallah. Do you intend to perform Umrah and, or Hajj? Yes, I do, <laughs> inshallah. Um, I'm supposed to go soon. I'm praying Allah is gonna facilitate it still. It's really hard this year with COVID um, and finding childcare. And things like that. So make dua for me that I do get to go to Umrah and see the Kaaba and visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the first time inshallah. What is my height? <laughs> I don't know why you want to know that. It's a bit weird question but okay. I'm five foot six. I think that's like 165 centimeters. I'm not sure. Um, you can translate it if you don't know what five foot six is. Uh, what else? How can men and women succeed in their marriage nowadays, especially with financial instability? If you get married for money, then you're not going to be happy when things are financially unstable. Um, marriage is about elevating each other when you are low. You're not always both going to be in the best position. And so it's the responsibility of the other person to be the pillar during that time. Um, I know men often feel almost emasculated when they are not financially set, you know, especially in a relationship. And I think sometimes women don't help that situation for men as well. Um, you know, so it's about that respect 
and just assistance where it's needed. The beautiful thing about being a woman is every, um, every penny you give towards your family's stability is considered sadaqah. So, you know, if you are blessed to be, um, you know, a woman with financial security and your husband is struggling, you know, pitch into the family in sadaqa, but not, not in a way that you are demasculating or making things difficult for your husband because he's not able to provide at that time. You know, if you look at the, the example of Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, she spent every penny, she was so wealthy, she spent every penny supporting her husband and supporting the cause of the Muslims, you know? That is not <laughs> as dangerous as it sounds. That was just my Adhan beep going off. Um, but, you know, we have to look at the history of the women in our deen, and um, they, they did not worry about their money. They spent it in the cause. And, um, you know, we should support our husbands just as they support us through our entire lives as well. Um, and just pray to Allah and rizq is from Allah, you know. Don't worry about your children being a financial burden on you. Allah will provide. SubhanAllah, when my daughter was born, she, our financial situation changed. She came with her own risk. So don't worry, don't stress if you're pregnant and, you know, COVID has thrown off your complete financial situation, you don't know what Allah is going to bring with this child, um, you know, so don't let money be a stress in your marriage. I'd rather be poor and happy and in love than rich and miserable. So, you know, just decide what's more important for you. Is it having nice things or is it being happy? What is my daily routine? Um, right now, my work pretty much takes over my life. Um, I wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, before Fajr. Right now, I have my breakfast. Pray Fajr, I, go to, I drop my daughter at childcare and I go to work so she can go to school, I can go to work. Um, I produce a live TV show on Islam Channel every morning, Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then I come home, I have my lunch, I have a bit of a break and do some work and then I have to go get my daughter, come home, finish work, cook dinner, and then I'm dead. <laughs> That's pretty much my time. Um, yeah, it's a bit, bit drab right now, but inshallah it'll get better. What dua we must make for asking Hidayah for our parents? I feel this one big time. Um, you know, my parents, they're not Muslim yet. Um, I just speak to Allah. Allah knows my fears. Um, you know, and I, I know what my parents have done for me. I know that they're really good people. And I just pray that Allah takes that all into account and opens their heart and gives them mercy before they have to meet him on the day of judgment. And I pray this person who messaged um, that their mother is um, not very strong on her beliefs that she, she comes back to the deen, inshallah. There's a lot of questions about marriage. No, I'm not gonna answer them, sorry. My marriage life, my, if I'm married, if I'm not married, when I'm gonna get married, it's not really anybody's business. So I'm not gonna answer that one, sorry. All of them. <laughs> okay. What will you do when you feel stress and anxiety? How did Aisha Rosalie become your friend? <laughs> oh, Aisha. <laughs> um, okay, I'll tell the Aisha story first. Those are the last two questions. Um, so I saw Aisha's revert story on Islam Channel's uh, Instagram page before I um, started working there. And when I went to her YouTube channel, I saw like she was like me eight years ago, like when I first converted. I didn't know how old she was. I didn't know anything about her, really. But I just felt this like instant connection. So I followed her on Instagram and I slid into her DMs <laughs> and I was like, Assalamu alaikum. I really like lovely to meet you. I feel so connected to you. I feel like we have so many things in common. And she like, straight away followed me back, replied me. And she, she like never checks her DMs now. So it was like by Allah's will that she actually checked that. Um, and she, was, she wasn't living in London at the time, but she was in London because she had jury duty. So she was like, hey, I'm in central London tomorrow. Why don't we meet for coffee? It was like the, the next day after we'd messaged. Um, so I went with my daughter to meet her. We had coffee. We prayed in the coffee shop together. It was like the solidifier of our friendship. And yeah, we just got on so well and it's only grown since then. And I just, I love her to bits. 
Um, and the last one, what do I do when I have stress and anxiety? So I've dealt with this a lot. I've posted about my mental health struggles on my YouTube channel. And I hope to do more, inshallah. I'd like to learn more about like from the Islamic prophetic sort of side of things, how to deal with mental health issues, because there's a big stigma in the um, ummah. And, you know, I'd like to clarify that mental health problems don't mean you have a low iman because even on the days where I struggled to get off the couch, I would still get up to pray. Even if it was like the hardest thing and I felt like I was like cemented to the floor, like I would just get up and I would do it. And my iman was always there. But obviously when you're depressed, it's very hard to do anything at all. And that's including practicing your deen. So that doesn't mean you have a low uh, iman because you have depression you have depression and that's causing you difficulty to practice. Um, but when I'm stressed and I have anxiety, most importantly is to breathe. Um, we kind of like tense up, especially in our core and it doesn't help, you know. You need to take deep breaths, especially if you're like in that panic kind of state. Um, do something good for yourself. Speak to somebody who you trust um, is very good. Speak to Allah is very good. Um, and just take it easy. Give yourself those good messages. Whatever it is that's stressing you out, if it's not in your control, um, you have to learn to let things go a little bit. And then you'll be able to kind of just see things more in perspective. And if you take it one step at a time, it won't look like such a big thing you need to overcome. It'll just be step by step, inshallah. I hope those were beneficial in some way or another, inshallah. And, um, you know, Feel free to always drop me suggestions of the videos you want me to make, reaction videos that you might want me to make. Um, inshallah, I'm really planning on doing more da'wah, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so that you get notifications when I upload new content and uh, follow me on my social media. Everything is in the link below. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.